guys welcome to NFI online video tutorials uh, and in this video we are going to talk about servo drive mechanism and we are going to see a lot of videos and a lot of tutorials in which we'll see how to work on servo drives how to create different circuits and how to control the servo using PLCs and other interfacing circuits all right so to start with I'll just go through the previous lessons about the basic motor control circuits so let's say if you want to control a motor, what, you, what you're going to do is you just connect the power source. Okay, and we are talking about three-phase motor. For instance, if we see this circuit, this is the motor, and this is a three-phase L1, L2, and L3 connected to three fuse, or you can also connect the MCB. So how the how does the motor react? So I'll show you, I'm showing you using this automation studio. When I go to online, this is L1, L2, and L3 connected directly to the motor, and motor is running. And if you have this MCB here, you can turn it on manually and you can turn it off. So that's how you can control the motor using an MCB. Then what we did, after that we need to include some control. So we installed a contactor in between the power source and the motor. Now this contactor can be turned on and off using a remote signal. All right. So in case if this motor is driving any conveyor or pump or grinding wheel machine or fans, so you can turn on these loads using a switch. So this is the circuit diagram. This is again three fuse and then you have three contacts. These are the contacts of contactor and that's the coil. To see that virtually happen, you can see here that's a remote control three phase motor control using contactor. Power wiring, control wiring. Now this is a switch, a normal toggle switch which is wired with a line and it's giving supply to a contactor coil which is connected to neutral at the other end. So this is a coil having two terminals of the contactor. And these are the three NO contacts of the conductor which are connected between the line and the motor. So when I turn on this switch, this energizes my conductor, closes the contact, provides supply to the motor and motor is running. So this is a very simple way to control the on-off operation of a motor by turning it on and turning it off. That's it. But sometimes we may want to include some more intelligence in the circuit. So in that case, what we did, we did on-off and direction control using the control circuit. Now we are including direction as well. So for that, what we have to do, we have to include one more contactor. You know, sometimes there could be an application where you need change in direction. So we can add one more contactor. For that, the circuit may be a little complex. It's like that, okay? So to see that virtually, I'll drag down to this one. Forward reverse control, three-phase motor control using contactor. Now in this case, if you see, there are three more contacts. We have written as CF, CF, and CF as contactor for forward, CR, CR, and CR for reverse. Now in this case, you know, the logic behind changing the direction of motor is if you interchange any two terminals, any two power terminals, all right? So in this case, if I turn on the main switch here, now this provides supply to the switches. When I press forward, now this contactor is latched. This is an interlocking circuit. This is the NO contact of CF, this is NC contact of CR. So this is latched. So when CF is latched, L1 is given to one end, L2 to the middle one, and L3 to the extreme end. So this is if this is U, V, W, N1 is going to U, L2 to V, L3 to W. That's how it goes. Now in case if you want to reverse the direction of the servo motor, of this normal induction motor, we have to provide L3 to the middle one and L2 to the extreme one. Okay, in this case, if I press reverse, this is happening. Now this L3 is going from here to V and L2 is going to W. So that's how you interchange the direction of this motor by just doing this interlocking circuit, okay, between CF and CR. Again, if I want to go to forward, I can press this one. This connects this L1 to U, L2 to V, L3 to W. If I click reverse, it connects L1 to U, L2 to W, and L2 to V, L3 to V. So you interchange L2 and L3 in the circuit that controls the direction. So it's, this is a simple way, no extra devices are required, just two contactors, and this is the main switch. All right. So to proceed further, we have on off and direction can be done. Now we have used VFTs as well. If you, if you have seen my previous tutorials, we have we are using VFT, and that is typically to control the speed of motor. So what I'm showing you here is how we can intelligently control the servo motor, the normal motor, induction motor using different mechanisms. So this is the VFT to control the speed. There could be some application where we need to, we need to control the speed like a conveyor application. We need to control the speed uh, depending upon you know the production rate. 
there are pumps to control the speed to control the pressure and the flow grinding wheel depending on you know different application you need to control the speed so speed controlling is an um, important factor which we need to understand so that we have done using VFT okay in which the control signal was 0 to 10 volt 4 to 20 milliampere or the signal from PLC okay so in VFT we have a device something like that to which the motor is connected and these are the control terminals to which we provide the supply to control its operation and the operation like speed and its direction and on-off operation, jog operation and multi-speeds can be controlled. But there was something which VFT cannot do. There was some, some parameter which some application in which VFT cannot be installed. So those applications require servo motor. So in servo motor, the main factor is position. We can also control the position of the drive, position of the motor, position of the load using servo motor. That's where we use servo motors. Now in position control mode, we have two things which we can control very accurately. One is the frequency. Oops. One is the frequency. You know, that frequency we can also control using VFT. Another is the angle or you can say that position. Okay. So these two are controlled by pulses. In VFT, we cannot control the position, but we can control the speed. But in server, we can control both. All right. So in server position control mode, this is a basic layout. What happens? We have a driver. Now driver is analogous to VFT in induction motor control. We have a servo driver. This drives the servo motor. Okay, so this is the motor, that's the driver. Okay. So this driver gives the signal to the servo motor. This is this is an AC signal. And to the back of servo motor over here, somewhere over here, we have an encoder. So if you want me to design it, I can make a small shape. We have an encoder here. Okay. This encoder is actually giving a feedback to the servo driver. So that's the encoder. That's the main part. A motor with the encoder is generally we call it servo motor. So this gives the feedback to the driver about its position, about its RPM. So a driver can you know directly read the feedback and it can display in the monitor. Now if you want to display this feedback in your HMI, you need to install a PLC. Even if you want to control this motor using a PLC, some pulses, we need to connect a PLC. Now the PLC should be specifically transistor type. Now this transistor type is a nature of output of the PLC. Now the PLC can give you high speed pulses using transistor type. Okay, this, this is mandatory. If, if ever you want to control a servo driver, you make sure your PLC should have transistor type outputs. This is having high speed control than relay type. Generally we have relay type. Okay. So the architecture is servo driver needs a PLC if you are controlling in position control mode. Now there are other modes as well. There is a velocity mode in which you can you can give 0 to 10 volt signal or 4 to 20 milliampere. And there is a torque mode for which we also need 0 to 10 or 4 to 20 milliampere to control the driver. Now that also depends on the nature of driver. Sometimes it only accepts 0 to 10 volts. But some drivers also have 4 to 20 milliampere signal to control the speed. Alright, so that depends. But 0 to 10 volts is by default available in all the servos. So that was a servo position control mode, little idea about that. Now, this is a system configuration. How does the driver look like and how you have to connect different things together. So for that, let me just, let me just enlarge it. Now, this is that driver. I'll show you that in the camera as well. This is that driver. Uh, this is getting a supply from the main. This is a power source. Single phase 220 to 230 volts. This is 1.5 kilowatt one phase to three phase. So it can accept single phase if it is 220 or 230 and it can also accept three phase if it is in this range, 230 volts. It can accept both. So the conductor is uh, connected here just to start and stop the power for the servo drive. All right. Now you have a connector here. This is CN1. This is 25 pin connector. This is analogous to M0 to M5 terminals in VFT. Now this connector is used to control the servo for different operations like position, velocity and speed. So we have to give signal to these pins. We will be understanding that in more details later on. Then we have CN2. This is a feedback coming from the servo drive, servo motor. This is the encoder at the back. This is giving a feedback by this connector to the servo driver. So driver can read the speed and RPM feedback, position feedback from this, from this wire. Then you have one more connector here. This is for programming. So this goes to a laptop and a dedicated programming device. So this terminal, this terminal here is used to program the servo motor. Because we do not have any buttons on the top to change the parameter, to enter the parameter. So we have to do that using a, P using a PC or a laptop so with uh, some dedicated software. 
and then you have these terminal coming out this is to control the motor so this is a power control power terminals for the for the motor connected to the driver so driver gives the power signals to the server from here and that is an ac signal okay then we have two more connectors this is regenerative resistor this is used in case of if your server is having a higher inertia so the back emf can be prevented by this resistor connected at two terminals so this was a system configuration now if you want to see that in the camera so we have a servo motor here that's the servo motor and this is the power wiring this one is the power wiring and here at the back you have the encoder so that's the encoder giving a feedback to the servo driver now we'll be doing that in detail but i'm showing you the servo trainer which you're going to use in this in this video course so this is the servo driver we have and these are the 25 pin terminals which we'll be using to interface the plcs and velocity controls and that's a small hmi this is a high speed output plc delta 12 sa that's the power supply 24 volts and that's the main mcb so we are going to use this trainer to understand the servo principle servo set interfacing circuits and other things this is the io box we have here to turn on and off the different parameters and different operations in the servo and that's the servo motor again so we have a lot to cover in this course regarding servo drives so let's see some typical application of the servo one is the servo indexing and the servo indexing if you see this is a base this is a servo motor and you have a disk on the top all right let me just highlight that is a disk on the top and you ha it has some slots on top of that and let's say there is some application some process which needs to be done on the slot okay so to do it to rotate that rotate the disk we need to rotate this in several angles okay in some angles to reach from this hole to this hole after this operation is completed we need to we need to have this hole beneath this tool so to move the server from this position to this position we need to rotate at some angle so to find out this angle what you're going to do is you're going to count the number of holes these are 12 holes in this disk so to reach from this hole to this hole you need to move it to some angle which should be 360 that is a whole circle divided by number of holes 12 so the indexing is 30 degree so we need to move the di this disk by just 30 degree exact 30 degree which you can do using some plc and some controller you can find out the number of pulses and you can run this motor by 30 degree this is possible exact 30 degree or in case if you need 45 degree or 90 degree you can do that so this is called indexing typical indexing we do and you can do that using some push pattern or by sensors or by some timer or timer loops all right that is one application then you have an action of our motor this is one of the video in which I, I can show you how this moves using a servo motor so this is running in steps then it runs overall then it runs in some steps then it runs so this is an indexing angle which this which this block is having okay this is a typical application how we can use servo motor to move something in some steps all right and there are a lot more applications which you can understand in our know, day-to-day life also in industrial applications so what we'll be covering in this course is we'll be understanding the servo wiring so we have some circuits which will understand how to wire the servo motors to the 25 pin terminals and then we'll be doing how to take the feedback from the servo encoder and how to connect the wires how to do the programming of servo some interfacing circuits then we'll be doing servo velocity control mode how to control the servo using 0 to 10 volt signals or from signals from analog cards then some scaling servo scaling then we'll be doing servo position control mode in which we'll be using a plc and we'll be making some programming code to control the servo motor this is very interesting then we'll be doing servo dual control mode in which you can switch over from programming from position to speed mode or vice versa then we'll be doing servo torque mode and after that we'll be understanding digital servo digital signals to read feedbacks so when servo is ready you need a feedback or when servo is on you need a feedback for zero speed you need a feedback so we'll be understanding how to take the feedback from the servo driver then we can also control the servo using some digital input signals okay some external commands to turn on the servo command inverts pulse inhibit inputs clockwise counterclockwise how to connect limit switches in your servo application how to connect emergency switches so this is the brief of the course which we are going to cover in this servo 
online turbo course all right if you have any doubt or if you have any specific queries you can drop me a comment i'll get back to you in the next video we'll start with how to understand the servo wirings in detail all right thank you